We have a great, great show for you today. The playoffs are actually here. We're in playoff mode now. We're going through ride or die. We're taking your questions. We're lighting boats on fire. It's a great show. You're going to enjoy it. Make sure you like, subscribe, and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome, one and all. Jason Morris here, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. The Hello. D- the Deucers. We found Al Borland. Oh, Rocket Man from yesterday. Outer yeah. space is cold, guys. <laughs> Negative 450 something degrees cold. That's what I hear. Which is the exact same forecast for Buffalo this weekend. That's yeah. right. But rain. Well, yeah, yeah. Would you, <laughs> there will be. There's there no will. rain in space. That's one of its uh, best attributes. That is. Yeah, that's what they say about life, outer space. Or life. No rain or life in outer space. You want to escape the weather, just go to outer space. You want to escape everything. everything. <laughs> yeah. You just go there. <laughs> yeah. I'm tired of gravity <laughs> and life. There will be lots of fantasy players jettisoning, jettisoning oh, themselves man. into outer space if their fantasy playoffs are disturbed by uh, icy sleet rain, which they say is worse for the football. Yeah, no, massive advantage. Right, don't massive. do not put a roof on your dome when you are roof in, on the dome, man. Eh? A, a roof. Whoa, on your double stadium. dome, <laughs> double dome. Well, Hashtag yeah, double dome. You don't want a double look, roof. Look, the weather in Buffalo is to a place where we probably need two roofs. We had the uh, the super dome. Some of that roof blew off. If you had two roofs, if you would have had a super duper dome. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is a good start. Uh, the Deucers are here, all of them. Al, the Judge, the Borgogan. Speaking of the Borgogan himself, we do have a special treat for you this Friday we at do. 2 p.m. Eastern. The uh, the DFS crew, Matthew Betts, Kyle Borgen, 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 uh, Kyle Borgenoni, Matthew Betts, live in studio uh, for the very first time, BallersLive.com. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see it there, those ugly mugs with their DFS genius. They say, you know, it's like um, – Bigger brains, uglier faces. Yeah. That's true. They're, and they're horrific looking. And I mean And that's to your advantage, Foot Clan. Yeah, come for the DFS advice, but stay for those bets biceps. Yeah. Yeah, Kyle's gonna look. Yeah, I hope I hope you get a good pump before the show, because otherwise it's gonna be a disaster. Yeah, you gotta be during the show. You have a couple <laughs> of days to to really start working out. I feel pretty good on the pickleball court. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's not going to help you aesthetically. Yeah. Um, but we uh, no, we're excited. They've yeah. never been live in studio, sharing some DFS knowledge. If you are, uh, you know, if, uh, this year not all your teams are in the playoffs. You want to transition some of that mind energy into daily fantasy, prop betting, any of those things. Which they've uh, done very, very well for listeners uh, on the DFS. Show. Yeah, and uh, look, if you're if you're still listening to this and you're not, you know, competing in the playoffs, kudos to you because this is one of our tips that we give every year. We should, probably should have gave it a week or two ago. Stay plugged in through the rest of the season because stuff happens that affects next year's fantasy football season and fantasy football draft and playing in DFS and, and props and everything. That is a really good way to make sure that you're still connected and you don't miss these breakouts and how they affect things moving forward. Yeah, if you missed the playoffs last year and pretty much bailed on – Following the sport, you missed Amon Ross St. Brown's true breakout. And right. now, coming into this year, you might have let someone else draft him. And obviously, you regret that now because he's been a d- dominator. Yeah. Uh, another quick update before we get into the show. We've got a quick question. Ride or die NFL news. Thursday night preview. Some mailbag. Lots going on in the fantasy world. But one more update. The uh, the current Megalobowl points leader. Mm. Oh, it's a new one. Is uh, team name is Hunton for a cup of coffee. 
and the username is JSWolves89. They are 25-3. and three. They have 2,234 points. And uh, there are two undefeated teams. Jason looked this up yesterday. Skunk League and yeah. Boo. I, no, I, I got it. It's uh, Buckfer Skin. Yes. yes. Buckfer Skin himself. <laughs> um, the playoffs are here, right? That, that's right. So um, congratulations for having undefeated teams, the most points. It doesn't matter. It's all worthless now, other than getting into the playoffs. The Megalobowl playoffs are live. You can go to megalobowl dot com and check out the standings. They will be live scoring updates uh, as soon as football is being played. The top fifty percent of everyone that is in the playoffs will go on to week sixteen. The top fifty percent of that week will go on to seventeen, and the number one score that week will be me. So you're in. I am in. Nice. Yes. Very nice. Yes. No planes of losing. None whatsoever. Quick question of the day. Oh, we're back. <laughs> Should non-playoff <laughs> teams be able to add and drop players from waivers? Uh, this is once a year. Yeah. We get this question a lot. I assume I'm going to be consistent with my answer. I mean, I don't remember yesterday, but. I think, of course, is the answer. Like, I want people in my league participating over the back half of the year. The way we handle it in League of Record is the first two teams, like the, the next two teams that are out of the playoffs, they actually compete against one another over the last three weeks to determine fifth and sixth spot in the draft. So, you know, I think activity is good. So disincentivizing activity you know, you want an audience for your playoffs too, right? You want all the teams in the league sure. paying attention. Uh, you don't want them, you know, disconnecting for a number of weeks. Yeah, I, I do think that they're, you know, the better leagues have something to play for after the playoffs are over for everyone. You got a toilet bowl bracket or whatever, and and in those situations, perhaps a weekly cash prize. Yeah, there's there's a lot of different ways to incentivize and and enjoy playing through the. Uh, playoff weeks even when you're out of the playoffs obviously not quite as fun as going after the championship in those situations it's obvious right everyone should be able to make transactions in the other leagues where it's like it's not a keeper league or or dynasty and it's just one of those things where the people that are out are out they don't need to set their lineups they're not playing for anything people get bent out of shape when they make waiver pickups I think if the platform allows it is fair game go for it yeah, and, and again, that's not to say collusion is okay. You can't ask right. one of the teams that are out of the playoffs to go pick up three quarterbacks to keep them from your def you know your opponent. That's that's collusion. But organic, you know, picking up of players, I'm fine with it. You know, I'm also not actively as the commissioner saying everybody go do it. I'm just if it's allowed, it's allowed. Like Jason said. Yeah, I mean, I if if you want to check out and not make them, then feel free. It was kind of like what Mike just said about listening to the podcast when you are out of the playoffs. It is helpful to you. Staying active, staying informed, participating through the rest of the season is only going to help you as a fantasy manager. But if you want to check out, you know, you don't have to make waiver pickups, but it's it shouldn't be out of bounds. Yeah, yeah. So uh, anything to add there, Mike? No, when I'm out of the playoffs, I'm an angry person. Yeah. And I share that anger, and I try and spread it around the league by uh, making pickups. <laughs> like, sorry. I, the, the other side of the argument of like, well, in a professional league, the people that are in the playoffs are the only teams playing for something the other teams aren't doing. I totally understand that side of the argument. But we are not playing that sport. We are playing fantasy football where things are very different, where when a quarterback rushes for 10 yards, it's the same as them throwing for 25 yards. We play a different game, so I play within the context of my game and my rules, and if I'm, if I'm in pain, that's all I want other people to feel. And you don't rage drop players. No, oh, no, no. No, that makes people better. Yeah. You're like, so, they, like what? That is, it's the craziest maneuver of... I like it. You think, screw this league. Yeah, you think you're saying I'm taking my ball and going home. Except no, you're going home and you're leaving all your possessions on the court for everybody else to pick up and enjoy. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, I I agree, and I know people have different. Uh, Jason mentioned the. I don't want my wallet anymore. <laughs> it's full of money. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> I'm going home yeah. naked. <laughs> Oh, crap. I can't afford to get an yeah. Uber anymore. Now, Jason mentioned the toilet bowl. You know, some some leagues, they take the uh, 
the direction of, of playing a competition for the number one pick. I'm very against that. Like, I, I, I don't believe that that's the best. Like, if reverse, reverse order of draft picks is set up for the purpose of making the worst teams better, like in a dynasty or keeper league, I'm, I'm sure. saying for an example, I don't want to compete. You know, I don't want to let the fifth and sixth seed dominate the end of year bracket to get a better pick. But there are probably some creative ways that you could do that. Um, you know, we do a lottery for our top four picks. You could do something where a win during those final eliminated weeks earns you, you know, an extra ball in the lottery, so to speak. There are some ways that you could probably handle that that don't give an advantage to the better teams because, you know, that's the whole point of reverse order. It, 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 Otherwise, you know, you probably would have won more games if you had a good team. So. It does help, though, with if you're saying, like, if the biggest problem is that you're concerned about is people tanking and just losing on purpose – if you're saying no, you actually you have to win to incentivize Except things for the picks. You can't win when you're the worst. Well, here, I mean, yes and no. I I would agree with you. Um, in a keeper and dynasty setting, like our main league is a is a keeper league, so there's a lot of transactions that are made for the future, and teams that are bad get worse because teams that are trying to buy buy and and uh, sure. make them worse in the here and now. But if it's just a redraft league, where yeah, but then you don't you're not determining draft order based on that. In a redraft league, you just draw out of a hat again the next year. Well, you can, or you could say, "Hey, the, we're gonna we're gonna set up the yep. draft order based on the rest of the season," and and that seems fun to me. All right, ride or die. Ride or die, presented by Chevrolet. All right, last week. Mike rode with DJ Moore. I rode with Hart, <laughs> and it was broken. It was a foolish ride. It was. Uh, but he did ride with Najee Harris, who ended up as RB15. Which, that was brain. That was just process of elimination. And then uh, Jason and I, we uh, successfully uh, went against Dak Prescott against yeah. Houston. Nailed Houston, the game script. Houston once, ag <laughs> once again, uh, just giving up one touchdown to Dak. They're a terrible matchup for quarterbacks. Week 15, ride or die, Brooks, what do you have for us? All right, guys. Uh, a lot of people asking about this guy. <laughs> Alvin Kamara coming back from the bye versus the Falcons. Can he be a top 15 running back? Can we get to that? Uh Oh, baby. Oh. Not even letting us talk. We're already trying to juice him up. Well, I mean, you should have the opposite sound, like when the... Yeah, I mean, that's a, like a death sound or when the mushroom goes away. I will uh, I will follow suit with the sound, though, because I will be riding with Alvin Kamara. I think he is a top 15 running back this week. The bye week... Did you know that Andy Dalton's still the quarterback? Yeah, Andy Dalton is still the quarterback. I think the bye week is going to be helpful for them uh, as a team. You've got Mark and or Mark Ingram on IR. The matchup against Atlanta is great. Weeks and weeks and weeks ago, we had a playoff primer. We were talking about the playoff schedule being great for Alvin Kamara. We did bring up that getting to the playoffs yeah. was a brutal schedule for Alvin Kamara, and you felt every ounce of that over the last little while while he has stunk. Um, I, I know it's hard. Uh, he is someone that I think a lot of players are going to have a difficult decision with this week. I'm riding with Kamara. I think he's a great play this week. Mike? I'm going to ride, baby. The Jason laid it out. No Mark Ingram. Did you know that Andy Dalton is the quarterback? <laughs> Unfortunately, I do know that. Uh, but no Ingram to take away touches with his unfortunate injury. And the matchup against the Atlanta Falcons, I think, is one that – Camaro will exploit. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm going to ride. Jerry Judy, 10 fantasy points this yeah, week. This is the He's tough taking one. on the Cardinals. I loved him last week. Yeah, I'm going to ride with him again. Ooh. This is a great line. It really is tough because the Cardinals are falling apart. They're usually pretty good against wide receivers, not like, you know, New York Jets level, but they, they get scored on elsewhere, tight end, running back. But Jerry Judy is, you know, the guy that's alone here. It's a really good line. Ten fantasy points, I think, is about where he should be scoring. I looked at his game log. He's only done it once this year without a touchdown. So I feel like this is in 
you know, a big a big part of this is will he get a touchdown? I'm going to bet against him, so I will choose die. He is like looking at his box scores and trying to navigate everything. It's it's pretty difficult of of trying to just get all the context involved and when actually healthy and playing his full allotment of snaps, he's been good more often than he has been bad, but it's just his his snap percentages and energies and injuries have kind of been all over the place. So it's difficult to figure out just exactly who is Jerry Judy, but I'm going to ride. I'm going to take the 10 points. The Arizona Cardinals uh, defeated kind of feel like they're just wrapping up the season now, especially with Kyler Murray being out. They have defensive injuries as well. So I'm going to ride to a tongue of Iloa taking on Buffalo in the weather. Uh, I'm out. <laughs> two, two passing touchdowns for Tua this week against Buffalo. Uh, I'm going to ride. I think he Ooh, will. Okay. I think he'll pick up a couple touchdowns against the Buffalo defense. It's a very important game. I expect a good game plan for Mike McDaniel. Ooh, you went full in sync. I uh, ride, ride, ride. Yeah, you did. Ride, ride. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go two, Tua for two. Yeah, it, it's another good line, but um, I I think Waddle is still waddling a little bit he's had two different stretches this year where he's kind of come up lame in a game and never he has not missed a game he is played through whatever injuries but he hasn't always been the wet you know when he's full go he's unstoppable um I'm gonna wait until that happens the fact that they're in a bad weather environment against uh, the Bills defense it's looking uh better and better over the last couple of weeks and Tua has looked not quite as good the last few weeks, so I, I will um, I will bet against uh, Tua getting Tua touchdowns and die. Yeah, I my confidence level in Tua this week is low. Uh, I'm going to say die on this one. Two touchdowns should be easy for him to get. Like he can have a bad game and still hit the two touchdown line. So trying to you know set your expectations here is difficult. But Andy. Your confidence level in Tua, where are you at as far as like would you be going uh Jared with Jared Goff? Jared no. Goff against the New York Jets. You'd stick with Tua? Yes. What about the super streamer of the week, Mike no. White? No, I'm sticking with Tua. You go with Tua? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's tremendous risk with Mike White and the the ribs and potentially getting a big hit in that game. I love if everything goes according to plan, it should be a really big week for him. For but Mike White or Tua? For Mike White. Okay. But um, Tua has elite weapons, very important game, and uh, I think higher upside. Okay. All right, that was Ride or Die presented by Chevy Silverado. Learn more about Chevy Silverado at Chevy.com. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Dallas Goddard can return. Yeah, Jay, we pumped. Yeah, we're <laughs> we're we're, uh, we're come soup, on, man, he's we're healthy. Soup's pumped. Um, Why would you be? Well, so in league of record, I've got uh, Devonte uh, <laughs> Smith stack with Jalen Hurts, and so it's it's <laughs> difficult. Uh, but it is good that Dallas Goddard is back. It's good for Jalen Hurts, who's really he didn't change much um, as far as his fantasy value losing Goddard. But I know there's a lot of playoff teams that snuck in with Goddard. Um, my, my son's got Goddard in the playoff league, uh, our shadows league. So that, you know, it's good to get him back. Are you throwing him right into the starting lineup? If he plays? Yes. I would depend on my other options. If I had David and Joku or Dallas Goddard coming right back off of the injury. I mean, that's a tough decision for me. Yeah, yeah. I think that the teams that made the playoffs found a serviceable pivot like, about like Gerald Everett. Oh, I'd play. Goddard over Gerald Everett for sure. What about uh, Greg D? No, I'd probably go back to Goddard in that okay. situation. So yeah, I, yeah I, certainly everything is always contextual, but I think that there are very few tight Taysom ends. Taysom Hill. Oh, give me, uh, give me Dallas Goddard. Okay. Uh, Pat Fryermuth played through a foot injury on Sunday. Fifty-seven percent of snaps, dealing with injury now. Yeah, which sucks. That sucks to hear. But that is like at least good because we I don't remember what show we me and Jay were talking about it of uh, maybe it was Monday the snaps for the Muth have not been Luth and it's 
Like it's been perplexing of what is going on? Why are they not playing Friermuth more? And now you have an actual explanation. Yeah, but that doesn't solve the problem. No, no, that's for what playoff, I said. For the playoffs, what do you do? It sucks. I, I mean, more than likely, you're still playing the Muth. More than likely. Yeah, he's been Dallas a- Goddard. Oh, Dallas, <laughs> Dallas Goddard. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's somebody that you know people had. But it's like he's consensus number eight for us right now on the week. So you're he's not an auto start. No, he's he's definitely not. I mean, you have do you chase the big performance of Schmevin Schmingram no. against Dallas? Cole Komet's been pretty hot. He'd been just, he was on bye week, so you completely forget that Cole Komet and the Chicago Bears have been doing all right. He gets to take on the Philadelphia Eagles. You get Tyler Conklin in a what should be a plus matchup against the Detroit Lions. What about Chig? Akonquo or or Njoku, would you play both of those guys over the Muth? I would with the foot injury. I'd probably play Njoku, but I would not play Okonkwo over Muth. What about Jeff Driscoll at tight end? Oh, Driscoll. Uh so that's part of our news is saying what who? So Aaron Wilson, Texas reporter, says that he's expecting that both Mills and Jeff Driscoll will continue to platoon the position. But head coach Lovey Smith would not commit to doing it. He's probably doing the the football thing of I'm not going to give away my game plan. So it, if you if we get any kind of news or you just you believe that Jeff Driscoll is going to be 50 percent of the snaps at the quarterback position, I would go with him over the Muth. I was mostly joking. I didn't know you were going to give me a real professional answer. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Mike White ready to roll. Zach Wilson moved up to number two on the depth chart. Romeo Dobbs. Expects to play. Hey! On, expects to play on Monday. Remember that guy? Yeah, yeah. Does it, does it throw a wrench into your Christian Watson? Uh, it, it'll be something to watch. I, I believe I would continue starting Christian Watson. I'm I not totally going to get off the the boat that is on fire. I mean, eventually you do want well, to exit yeah, no, boats I, when they're on fire. If a boat but, was on fire, I'd go yeah, right in the a, water. That's a bad thing. Well, he's yeah. not a boat on fire. Well, maybe it's more <laughs> like a like, Viking funeral. That's the Cardinals. Um, he's, He's like a speedboat at maximum speed right now. So See, the maybe, fire's behind him. Yeah, like just pushing him forward. Maybe, I don't know if there's any fire, man. Yeah, look, maybe you're afraid that the boat's going too fast and is going to flip. So why, he, why do you need a fireboat? Well, <laughs> NBA NBA Jam rules require that there's, there's fire. There's no boats here. in NBA Jam. And I, but then I went with the <laughs> boating analogy. Game. And so I you need don't the, get this many analogies in one I sentence. Need, I need both of them. I need a boat and I need fire and I need to figure out how we're safe. Um, we why are on is the there water. A boat? With fire. We don't need the water, man. It's the boat that I'm riding on. Um, so, uh, yes, I am I am going I'm to... I'm jumping from the boat to the jet ski. Uh, and we're re- going off the waterfall. Regardless, uh, you, you stay in the flames wherever you are. Not the water. Uh, Unless it's a boat. <laughs> with Which you said to jump off Christian of. I'm so Watson. confused. <laughs> Just play Christian Watson. Just oh. play him. All right, um, but, that's helpful. Yeah, pay attention to to Dobbs being uh, active. I don't. Are you picking up Dobbs in hopes that he is? No, no, yeah, I don't no. Think so. I'm not interested. No, Christian Watson has broken out. Uh, we're not going to get Cooper Cup back, according to Sean McVay. We have Saturday games this week. Don't forget three Saturday games. Jeff Wilson is one of them. Non participant on Tuesday. Uh, Tyreek was limited. He should be okay. But Jeff Wilson, someone to watch. You have a game where. The running game could factor in significantly. The Dolphins going to Buffalo. Raheem Mostert uh, could be the guy. Yeah, he will. Uh, Amari Cooper, non-participant on Tuesday. That's not surprising. It's an estimated. Yeah. I expect him to get a little bit of uh, rest as he prepares for a pretty big matchup for the Browns. Tyler Huntley, limited. Lamar, DNP. But he's questionable. Good news, Mike. Mike taking issue with the platforms currently keeping Lamar it's, unquestionable. It's not. It's not necessarily the platforms because they're just pulling in from the stat providers. I understand that, but to have an estimated three week injury for Lamar Jackson and he has not practiced in two weeks, and to say, well, maybe, like just just stop, just stop. This is the Ravens. Just yeah. holding out hope that uh, he heals, and they don't want to rule him out, so the platforms yeah. can't. And I'm super excited for the the press conference with Coach Harbaugh around Saturday when they say it'll probably be Huntley. And then he'll go to doubtful, <laughs> and you still can't do anything about it. 
So yeah, you enjoy. You, but an hour before kickoff, <laughs> yeah. Mike, you'll be able to move them to IR. Yeah, I have the site when it comes to calling games, but Mike has it as it comes to you know the how the coach will handle <laughs> the injury report for the rest of the week. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by our friends at USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Uh, back in a second. Well, we, uh, we're we not done with the Thursday night football games. We've got a big one this week. Time to break it down. Thursday night breakdown. The San Francisco 49ers, they're 9-4. and four. They oh, take man. on the Seattle Seahawks, who are 7-6. and six. DraftKings Sportsbook line right now, San Francisco minus 3 on the road against Seattle. The over-under is 43-and-a-half. Brock Purdy is expected to play. Still listed as questionable. The The sports book obviously has him playing. This is not a Josh Johnson line. San Francisco won 27-7 in week two. It's the game we lost Trey Lance before we lost Jimmy G. And um, San Francisco ran the ball 45 times in that game. It was also, so it was week two, and this was the Seahawks were coming off of the week one uh, upset of the Denver Broncos, and it was, oh, what what do we have here with the Seattle Seahawks? Then they went and got absolutely torched. Geno Smith's uh, by far his worst fantasy game of the season. I'm seeing him at quarterback 30. He scored 6.1 points, sub 200 yards, no touchdowns, threw a pick. Tyler Lockett was okay in this particular matchup, but this was it was because it was week two. We didn't know what Geno was yet. So then, of course, everybody abandoned ship of what is the possibility of Geno, and then, of course, over the next few weeks, he reestablished his value. So where are we? I think Geno Smith is the most important question uh, for this this matchup of, do you look at week two and say it's kind of prescriptive because the 49ers defense is so great, divisional matchup, uh, Shani knows the Seahawks, because like, everything starts there. It's hard for me to see – to have enough confidence in Geno Smith this week with the matchup. And I, I looked at this for so long. I don't have a good gauge on the way this game's going to go. Like sometimes you see a line or, you you know, there's questions on both sides of the ball here. Sure. You don't have Debo Samuel. You're going to be without him for a little while. You're going on the road to a harsh environment, San Francisco is, where Brock Purdy's going to have a challenge. But the Seattle defense is really kind of – slowed down from a, a much better start against fantasy options. You have a 32nd ranked defense against running backs where, you know, San Francisco, that's their identity. They're going to run it down your throat. Christian McCaffrey, Jordan Mason, uh, they're going to be able to do that successfully. And then you're going to be put like, my worry is that they go up 14, nothing right out of the gate, because I don't think the, the 49ers, yeah, or, the 49ers. Okay. I don't think that Seattle is going to have the passing game success necessary facing that pass rush in a negative game script. This is the number one team against quarterbacks giving up 12.1 fantasy points per game. Number one against running backs. We don't know if Ken Walker is going to be, he did practice uh, fully healthy, but yes, yes. He looks like he's going to play. I just, I, I don't think I'm wanting to play Geno this week. That's no. just what my gut says, and he's been so good. I, I think with DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, they have been good enough. They are talented enough on their own, and that is kind of where you beat the the San Francisco 49ers is, you know, the wide receivers get enough where you can start them. You're not excited about them, and but even though you're able to start Metcalf and Lockett, I'm, I'm benching Geno Smith, who's been incredible. The last he five has. weeks, he's been absolutely fantastic. Granted, it's been a good stretch of games. Next week against Kansas City, if you're if you're uh, you know uh, prioritizing playoff matchups, oh man, oh baby, I'm in on Geno, but I'm benching him this week. I I don't want him against uh, the San Francisco 49ers, and I think the 49ers are going to, I think they're going to run the ball 40 times in this game. What about and, 49? Oh yes, I really miss. They're going to run the ball 49ers times this game. <laughs> Um, yeah, early Monday, my first thing I did when I, when I was looking at DraftKings lineups for this week, I was like, I don't care if he's 20,000, I'll put Chris McCaffrey in my lineup. And then he was Thursday night, so I couldn't put him on the main slate. But I do think that 
you know, we, we saw this with Carolina. Carolina, even though Geno ended up with a good game, they were able to have these long, excruciating drives where it's like San Francisco just doesn't get the ball because they cannot stop the Seattle. run right now. Seattle. They can't stop the run right now, and I think we're going to see that from San Francisco. San Francisco's fantasy points given up the last five games to quarterbacks. I'm going to read their totals. 13, 10.3, 10.3. 14.8, 12.1. Not a lot of upside right there. So, you know, most of those games are at home. I will say that, uh, but it, it's been. Let's fire up some names here. Super streamer Mike White or Gino. I'll take the shot on Mike White. Yep. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, who's been red hot, but he plays the Dallas Cowboys. Give me Trevor. Yep. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, Monday night against the Los Angeles Rams. Give me Aaron Rodgers. Yep. Okay. Names have now been fired up, and it's over. <laughs> Christian McCaffrey, play him. Yeah. Kenneth Walker, full practice. Oh, gosh. So, oh. Kenneth Walker is not – I mean, were, were, was it yesterday? That, was it Walker where you were saying yeah. the, gift, the gift might be if they just leave him out? Yep. And now I think that I think you have to – like, I'd play Mostert over uh, – uh, over Kenneth Walker? I don't blame you. There. Yeah, if Kenneth Walker practices in full this whole week, which it seems like he's going to since he did on Tuesday, if he doesn't have a setback and he practices in full, you would imagine he's going to be healthy and ready to go for this game. And that is brutal because he should be um, not an auto start in this matchup. He should be someone that you consider. You look at your other options, and yeah, you could play him, but I mean, I don't, I don't think the upside against San Francisco is – Really there. All right, I'm going to give you some names. Rashad White against the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm all about Rashad White. Okay. Uh, Jamal Williams, uh, who was, Jason? A, was a touchdown machine, and now he takes on the Jets. Uh, I'll go Jamal Williams. Oh, the, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, I have more confidence in him getting a touchdown than, uh, you know, against the San Francisco 49ers. A.J. Dillon against the Los Angeles Rams. I think we've gone too far. I'll too go. You'll go Cam Walker? Yeah. Okay. Uh, George Kittle. Lots of questions around George Kittle. Left the number two overall finish in week 11. He's been 25, 30, and 15. Uh, you know, five targets. Cool. I'll take five targets. But um, 28 yards, 22 yards, 26 yards. N not a fan. If you have Evan Ingram. I, I actually think George Kittle's a good start this week. Um, I almost made him my start of the week. Ooh, yeah, the, spicy. The matchup against Seattle is, uh, you know, on, on the course of the season has been really good. If you adjust for schedule, it's great. And the fact that Debo is gone, if you look at George Kittle's history, when Debo or Ayuk is off the field, either one of them, he has been far more involved in the game plan. The fact that this is a matchup that you can exploit the tight end position, and he's getting enough targets, he's athletic enough, uh, you know, you you've got to you, you know if if you're considering because he has been bad um, since Christian McCaffrey came and they've you know gone away from Kittle, I think you're questioning like oh do I go to an uh, you know Joku or uh, Everett or those types and I'm I'm firing up George Kittle in those matchups this week. Brandon Ayuk looks like a great start uh, moving forward, getting the ball downfield and in his games without Debo. Averaging 12.8 fantasy points per game, eight targets, 60 receptions. Uh, the question would be whether Seattle can keep up a little bit and force the passing game. Jason brought up how often they're going to run. I agree with that. So that's the other question mark there. Uh, Brock Purdy, not a streaming option. I, I I think he is. I mean, the, mostly because the the streaming options this week are pretty brutal. Uh, I would hope I don't have to. So. If, but I mean, desperate times, and then well, on the what about in this matchup? I mean, would you yeah. take Brock Purdy or Geno Smith? Ooh, that's a oh man! I would go Geno. I'd go Geno. Yeah, I'd stick with him. I mean, Lockett is in. Do you make anything of DK Metcalf's uh, six, uh four for thirty five against San Francisco? I mean, that was on the road. So are you not just really? I mean, he is just force fed the football, and he's big enough for it to not matter who's playing against him. I. I was looking at him in in you know Thursday night DFS okay. decisions and um, I feel good enough to play him. He's earned it. Cool. All right, into the mailbag we go. Mailbag. Yeah. 
If you have a question for the show, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, click the Submit a Question button, or dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. One headline from the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, the Start-Sit tool has gotten a little bit of a makeover. It is much snappier. Upgrade. It's like a boat that's like on fire that got struck by lightning. Yeah. And then doused, and everyone was real safe. Yeah. And then the boat was just there, and you're like, sweet, I'm on a boat. Uh, a classic tale. The, yeah. The lightning turned it into a yacht, though. Hmm. What, like a superpowers thing? Yeah. Because <laughs> it was on fire, and then the lightning okay. it was like, pow, pow, it's a yacht. I feel like we're right in the middle of Boom Boom Kicker all over again. <laughs> uh, but check it out. The Start t- yeah. Tool is, is uh, generally one of the more popular tools throughout the entire year. It helps you break down. Like, the whole point of this show and again, we're here. If you want to treat us like a punching bag, we're here to take the blame for whatever went wrong in your you, league. Maybe you. Um, Since, at Andy Holloway. All right, okay, I'm here <laughs> to take the blame. But my point being is even with the start-sit tool, you know, we're giving you the, the choice we'd make, but we're also giving you an outlay of all the context, right? Like what's the situation for these two players – the different ways of looking at it. The truth is, is, and we've seen this evolution in fantasy football over the last 10, 15 years in general. You know, this used to, we used to live in the world of, you know, non decimal scoring and touchdown only leagues. The nuance and detail starts to emerge within the fantasy football world. You know, the progression of that is how you make a decision. It's not simply, do I start Aaron Jones or J.K. Dobbins? That question alone isn't enough to make the right decision for your football team because you need to factor in the other players you're playing, your opponent. Do you need upside? Do you need a floor? There's a lot of nuance. And so our job, as I view it at least, beyond being the punching bag, is to give you tools and equip you to make those decisions for your team, your league, your scoring system. That's our aim. That's what we're trying to do. So start, sit, tool is an, is a piece of the puzzle for your team. But you're making that decision. And I, I'll tell you, when I get the uh, tweets about thanks for, you know, helping me get to the playoffs, those are cool to see. I just say, you did it, man. I mean, you did it. Yeah, I did I did do it. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> we, may, we may have, you know. Or, get, oh, yeah, I see, what you're, I see what you're saying. You know, like we're the guy at the bottom of the wall. Just giving, just giving a little boost. Yeah, step on my back. Yeah. All right, let's jump into a voicemail. What's up, guys? My name is Beto. I'm a 911 dispatcher, and I'm the one with the emergency now. I need to know, do I start Amon Ross St. Browns against a tough defense, or do I start Kenneth Walker against another tough defense on my flex? Thanks, guys. Love the show. Well, I certainly have a, a pretty quick answer here. I assume Amon you guys Ra. are in the same yep. boat. Yep. If both matchups are bad, I will go with the absolute budding superstar who is not currently coming off of injury. Um, uh, most leagues now are at least half PPR or PPR. Amon Ross should be fine, even though it is a difficult matchup. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown targets since week eight, 10, nine, 11, eight, 10, 12, nine. Give me that baseline. Let the chips fall. I'll be happy. All right. Another voicemail question. Hey footballers. My waivers just cleared and I have a decision to make PPR. Should I start Mr. Ingram himself, Schmeppen, or the newly acquired Donovan Knight as my last flex? Thanks, guys. Love the show. Book Clan, let's bring home those titles. Let's ride. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Um, look, Schmeppen, he likes to disguise himself in the form of a player that catches one pass for four yards or three passes for 14 yards uh, in between, you know, going four for four you know, 55 and a touchdown 55! or last week's absolutely insane game. And if, if if last week was the pattern, he wouldn't be on his second team. And that was the best game of his career. Yeah. And it, it will be. So I would go bam. I mean, this isn't, I'm, I'm not starting Evan Ingram. Like I, I, I realize he was uh, awesomely involved and maybe in certain DFS situations or if you're getting a s- specific value or, you know, obviously some people are backed into where they just don't have any good options. But I am not chasing last week. He is coming not off in of, the flex. He is coming off of back to back weeks where he had great matchups over the last six weeks. The number one 
Fewest points given up to tight end is the Dallas Cowboys. Over the course of the season, fewest points given up to tight ends is the Dallas Cowboys. I'm not chasing Schmev and Schmingram here. Zonovan, bam, has looked great. Uh, Detroit is not a great matchup for running backs, but he's going to touch the ball a heck of a lot more than Evan Ingram. This one is is bam to me. I agree. All right, Twitter question from Jonas. How confident are you in J.K. Dobbins this week? My name is Jonas. Thank you. <laughs> Consensus RB21 on the week right now. Cleveland's dead last in expected points per rush attempt, 30th against fantasy running backs. It's been uh, quite delicious to play against Cleveland's uh, defense. But the recipe, I mean, has to be to shut this running game down and make Tyler Huntley do everything. How confident are you with J.K.? I mean, that's their recipe, but the Baltimore Ravens recipe is establish the run. I think we're going to see a lot of J.K. Dobbins, a lot of Gus Edwards. And like right now we have J.K. Dobbins sitting in just inside the top 24, and I think he belongs there. I think that he is a top 24 play. I'm not expecting another you know huge breakoff run and then a touchdown, but I expect that – he he is a starter. He's an RB two starter this week. What about the aforementioned Bam Knight? Would you play Bam Knight or would oh, you play man. JK? And I, I'm with you, Mike. I think I lean the JK, like positively towards what yeah. he's going to start doing. I I agree. I have JK and Zonovan back to back in my rankings. If I had to start one of them, I'm gonna go with JK Dobbins. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get the guy on the upswing. Any regrets, Jason, on not naming either of your male children Zonovan there are massive regrets okay. but only with one of them okay yeah I mean that's a that's a name I had never heard I like that it implies that one of your kids has a bad name it well and you don't want to say which right. one well one of them has a great name so <laughs> <laughs> all righty we are going to jump into another voicemail a footballer's big fan coming out of Squim, Washington I have a huge question I have Jared Goff, and my opponent this week in the playoffs has Amon Ross St. Brown and DJ Chark. Do I play Goff to counter him? Let me know. I also have Trevor Lawrence and Deshaun Watson to play. Okay. Thank you. I, yeah, I, I thought it was, do I play Jared Goff? Uh, if he's your only quarterback, I would recommend it. Okay. J Deshaun, Jared Goff Watson, or, Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence were the other two quarterbacks. Watson options. is out. Yeah. Voldemort looks like absolute trash right now until still, still had 20 fantasy points last week until you see great play I, I would agree trevor lawrence is to me a better play this week in in general against like, dallas uh, you know it's not not the world's best matchup but we've talked about how the matchup is bad for golf he's on the road um you know things could go poorly for golf in a vacuum this week but also you don't really counter the wide receivers. I mean, you can get lucky where you you play golf, and then all of a sudden it's a Jamison Williams uh, day, and his guys don't get the points, and you do. But usually, when you've got a quarterback going against two primary receiving options, those plays are negative for you. the 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 wide receivers are going to score more points on each one of those completions, um, and it'll be a net negative for you, even when there's a big touchdown. You know to with golf um the only reason to do that is if the rest of your roster is like so much more dominant than the rest of his roster right then it's more of a cancel out situation but i would i would go trevor lawrence in that situation yeah I, I, you need to look at the context of it uh it, because like playing out the scenarios of how can your team win this particular matchup uh it, and like i'll give you an example earlier on in the season uh kyle and i were matched up against a team that had a much higher projection really high upside and it was okay we're gonna play Lamar as our running back too do we go with Gus Edwards because uh, he was a, a decent play looking okay at that time but it was going through the game script of working it out okay let's say Lamar and Gus Edwards uh you know they they split a couple touchdowns that actually didn't work out in our favor it was the, the only way the scenario works out that we can win is we play Lamar and Gus Edwards doesn't get touchdowns. They all go to Lamar. So I think that's a, a scenario you need to look at of if Jared Goff is enough to counter these other two guys or is the scenario you're projecting the Lions just have a crap game and that's your way, that's your path to victory. Well, I mean, and to be to put a ball on it from my perspective, you I, I don't even think about 
opponents having my wide receivers in any capacity. Because at the end of the day, my roster has – if I get 20 fantasy points from Goff and it counters 100% of those two players, or I get 25 fantasy points from Trevor Lawrence, I mean, I want the 25. I don't care if it's directly corollary on the cancellation of those players. I want the player that's going to score the most points – independent of that scenario. I will factor it in a little bit if I was thinking about, boy, I might start DJ Chark because my opponent's starting Jared Goff. Maybe I'd think a little bit that direction on a fringe flex player. Sure. But, you know, it's not going to affect me if I have Amon Ra and it's not going to affect me if I have Goff. So, um, you know, this week... The so who, who do you have just on your rankings right now between Goff and, and Trevor Lawrence and Deshaun Watson? I would play Lawrence, and then I'd play Goff, and then I'd play Watson. That's how my rankings That's how are I as have well. It too. Yeah, so uh, I do think Desha I think brighter days are coming for Voldemort. I do. Um, I you know there there's going to be some pain involved, rust uh, coming coming off. But you've seen Donovan Peoples Jones. He's been pretty good. Yeah. And uh, we know that Amari Cooper has been banged up. So I don't know how much that factors in. I do think there's going to be some brighter days fantasy wise for Watson. There there could be this week against Baltimore. I mean, he, I don't love it. This past week against Cincinnati, another divisional game. He completed 26 passes, 276 yards and one touchdown had a pick. Like he, he just, it, it's not looked good. It's not looks good. If if you look at the Ravens' defense against quarterback, the beginning of the year they were just t they they were a matchup to target. Yep. And really, over the since week nine, and and remember they got Roquan Smith. That's really improved their defense. They have been a tough matchup for quarterbacks. Definitely, don't hear me prescribing you use Deshaun <laughs> Watson this week. He's at the bottom of that list. Okay. I just mean for the future. I think you know his ability to scramble. Um, he's the kind of player that gives you a nice baseline once he gets things together or the matchup is advantageous. Like I would not be surprised if a Deshaun Watson start in the fantasy playoffs proves it could. Uh, beneficial for fantasy players. Um, and then one final question here for on Instagram. What's the deal with Travis ETN? This comes in from T Cena six, seven, four. What's the I mean the deal is he's been garbage for for <laughs> fantasy football. That's the deal. If, are are you asking why? So he had a stretch of games that was a five game run weeks five through nine. The departure of James Robinson came out of it. Um, he was a top twenty four all five weeks, double digits all five weeks, top ten the final three games of that stretch, and every other game in the entire year has been single digits. The last two weeks. He has 16 opportunities and 17 opportunities. He is extremely involved in the offense. It has turned into six fantasy points and three fantasy points. What that was, is devastating. What was he knocked out in week 12? Uh, he was he played Baltimore, played 8%. Foot. It was a foot. So, but he's been he's been out there and and But I'm saying that it's since since he got knocked out. I mean, you may, perhaps you count the game against Kansas City before the bye week where it wasn't fantastic, but he was also a four point two last week. He just didn't do anything, right? But but Travis Etienne, the when he when you had that five game run in the middle of the season, it was because I know a huge play, yep. will happen at yep. some point during the game for Travis Etienne. He could be two yards a carry for for sixteen attempts, and that seventeenth is going to go forty fifty yards. It's a good point, Mike. So if his foot is really bothering him, I think that might be what the deal is with ETN. Look at his long runs during that stretch. Thirty, forty eight, forty nine, forty nine. Yeah. Last three games. Three, thirteen, and seven. There you go. He's not hitting a, a big play. And he's got back to back difficult matchups. Again, the last two weeks, Detroit we've been talking about how good they've been against running backs. Tennessee, yep. they're great against running backs. Brutal matchups. This week against Dallas, very good against running backs. The, the following week against the Jets, another bad matchup. So Travis Etienne someone where we just talked about 16 attempts or opportunities, 17 opportunities. You could play him, but you can't expect big games right now. Week 17 would you against play, Houston, you hope that he wins championships. Would you play Brian Robinson against the Giants or Travis Etienne? That, that, I'd probably still go Etienne, but, I would. The, but the problem is, is that five-game stretch for Etienne, put it in your brain that he was a – auto start every yes. week and maybe we're adjusting that view 
based on this recent production. Yeah, I would stick with ETN. The crazy part is after the foot injury, he played the most snaps of the entire year. He came back out and played 88% of snaps. So don't know what's going on right now. I suppose that game would have been better if he hadn't fumbled and lost the ball. But uh, Jason's right. Dallas, New York, I don't want those games. Yeah, it's rough. He's a, he's a running back three that is startable and benchable depending on your options for this week and next week. And then so he's a locked-in starter for Houston. So tell, tell me – Tell me the truth, then. Is he too big or not? Is he too small? What's the what's the size situation? Because I we're I mean, back to this. He was too small for a while. Then he was not too small. But I, is he too small again? I think he's a I think he's a little too small. Or his bone structure is weird because when I I've never seen someone get hit so hard as Etn. Every time he gets, it's like for some reason he puts himself in these situations where he lets defenders have a running start at him. I That's just how see he him fumbled get, too. He I, got every cult, time he got exploded. He's had like four explosion fumbles this yeah. year where he just he gets out to the edge, he's running and then it's it's like the the fake videos of a high school game where the, you know the 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 kid on a make a wish foundation is defender. blown up that's how it looks just like, like a like a pontoon boat out on the water on fire <laughs> exactly just you see me the Andy. classic the classic football analogy <laughs> all right that is it for today's show thank you jason you look good in that hoodie oh thank you you yeah. look good in that hoodie. oh wow thank you yeah don't forget get a hoodie mike spotify live this afternoon join us see you then everybody goodbye Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.